Okay, so now we're going to talk about inheritance. With inheritance, there's a supercast and a subclass, and you might also hear the terms parent and child. But there's a class, and you're making another class that's a subclass of it. It's going to inherit the properties of the existing class. Here it says public properties. We're going to see that that's not specifically true. There might be other possibilities. And it'll inherit methods except for the constructor. If you create a new method in the subclass, it, it's identically named, uh, it will override or shadow. And if you haven't specified that it will override, it's going to shadow instead. What shadow means, it's not something we've talked about, is that both methods are going to exist and the old one can still be referred to. And you do that using the my base keyword that you may have seen before. So that'll, that'll go back to its base class, basically. To override a method from the base class, the original method must be declared as overridable, and the new method must use the overrides keyword, otherwise it's going to be shadowing. Uh, and there's a link explaining that if you want more detail. A child class can override an inherited method. The methods have to have the same name for it to be over overridden. The program can tell which version of the method is actually being called based on which object calls it. So if, if two different objects are from different classes and have uh, the same method, it'll know based on the, the object which method it's running. Looking briefly at the payroll code that uh, Kevin demonstrated a little bit earlier, or maybe not demonstrated but kind of teased you with, uh, there's a few allusions here to how, how the inheritance could work with this, and it'll be very similar for the, the transition between lab 2a and 2b to lab 3a and 3b. Here, for example, we've got his find pay method, which is pretty close to the calculation method from class developed in lab 2a. So it's a protected, overridable method. Uh, so that means if I created a subclass of this existing payroll class, then I could create an, a method called find pay that overrides this one. This is going to be very close to what you need to do for lab 3a where you need to create a different method of finding pay for the senior workers. You'll also find here an example of a method that overrides another method. So here it's overriding the, the toString function. And a lot of people put this in their lab 2a, I guess, because they were just looking at Kevin's code. I don't know that it really made sense for that, but this is an example of a function that's being overridden. I want to keep these videos short, so I'm going to cut this one here, and there'll be a part two right away.